Thank you, uh, and Mr. Chairman, and again, uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Malley, for being here. And uh, in your testimony the other day uh, before the Senate, you said, people among us really need their neighbors to care about them. I think all of us on this body and the panel you were addressing would agree that there probably is no more important program our country has ever created that expresses our compassion for our neighbors quite so much as Social Security. I believe that that's true of this committee and all the members on both sides that understand truly the impact of this unbelievable commission that, as you pointed out in your testimony, and I come from an insurance sector place in the United States, in Hartford, Connecticut, studied at the Aetna School where they singled out Social Security as part of the three legs of the economic stool and the only one that's never missed a payment. Mm. And I would dare say also has that compassion <laughs> that you talked about. Uh, Commissioner, uh, can you talk about what you've done so far to address the customer service crisis? You did in your open remarks, but I wanted to give you a chance to expand on how you would use the $1.3 billion increase that President Biden has proposed. Yes, sir. The, uh, we are currently in a general hiring freeze in this agency. It's a crude tool. It, uh, that tool itself uh, hurts our operations. And hopefully with your help, we will get out of that soon in order to do a number of targeted hires right away. I want to thank you for, for what is in the... Uh, you know, the most recent action passed by this Congress. That's a little bit of help, and we need help. Uh, so it's a lot better than a cut, and then I know cuts were on the table. So we do have a plan for immediate targeted hiring in those teleservice centers, as well as some processing center backlogs, and, uh, and especially the DDSs. But more to the point of your question, uh, uh, the 15.4 that the President proposes, this is how we would propose to uh, invest those dollars to improve customer service. Uh, number one, 269 million into the field staff. Our field offices have been open uh, five days a week from nine to 4 p.m. off every day. And that's been true ever since the end of COVID. Uh, but they are short staffed, they are understaffed and they are overwhelmed. The teleservice centers, we would propose investing uh, $79 million in hiring more of the agents who can be on the other end of that call. Not surprisingly, when somebody's been on hold for an hour, they come off that call hot. And we right now have an attrition rate of about 24% in our teleservice centers. Uh, we would uh, invest $85 million in adding staff to the process uh, uh, centers, the, uh, the processing centers that I'm sure many of you get calls about people saying, hey, I was told my claim was approved, but it's been months, been weeks, I'm still waiting. That's what goes on at the processing centers. $89 million for the ALJ uh, hearings. And the biggest uh, amount of all is really the $2.8 billion for the state disability uh, uh, services. In my prepared remarks that are before you, there's a map that may look to you at first glance like it's a climate change map because the only colors on it are yellow, orange, and red. There is nothing green. There is nothing where we are actually hitting in a timely fashion those initial disability determinations. In the state of Montana, 85% of their disability determination folks are trainees. It's a tough, uh, it's a, it's a tough job. And some of our states have seen a 30% you know, uh, uh, reduction in staffing since compared to pre-pandemic times. And then finally, $1.7 billion to invest in IT modernization. It might be a little known fact, but it's been driven home to me that in our IT budget, which is only about a third of the size of the VA, not to be jealous, but in our IT budget, 90% uh, uh, of it is for maintaining old legacy systems. Think, if you will, about the city of Jerusalem being built up over years, except this is COBOL and green screens. Only 10% of it goes to modernization. And imagine you do that with 
40% of the nation who is on Social Security, knowing that's the only benefit that they have is their Social Security. And on average, that's 18,000 per male, 14,000 per female, and there's 5 million fellow Americans that get below poverty level checks in the wealthiest nation in the world.